everybody. Welcome to the Bourbon Buzzed and Ballin' Podcast. We are your hosts, Colby and Dutt, and it's time to rate that shit. We are at Colby's Bar, and this is the lineup today. That's right. We're doing a Bib and Tucker, and uh, it's kind of, a, kind of a mystery bourbon. Oh, yeah. When I'm doing my research, one website I go to says it's sourced from the Heaven Hill Distillery in Bardstown, Kentucky. We've been there. We've been there. And then another one says it's made in Columbia, Tennessee. So. We haven't been there. We haven't been there. And uh, so I'm not quite sure exactly where this comes from, but we're going to rate it anyway. So and one thing about the, the Bibb and Tucker, they, this is their, their youngest in their line of bourbon, and it's a six year. So they believe in, in aging their bourbon. Okay. And it's also filtered through sugar maple charcoal before it's put into their barrels and of course it's an american white oak barrel that's been toasted and charred on the inside and like i said they age it for a minimum of six years and this is the results so why don't uh why don't i put our rating system up on the screen oh, behind yeah, us that's and, right, that's right. and you explain our rating system to the listeners Yes, to, to the new ones that we picked up this week. That's right. There's always <laughs> new ones. We appreciate that. So those of you watching, you can see the rating system behind me. And so you can follow along with the display as well. Um, those of you listening, we have a one through four scale. Uh, one is, is our lowest level. We don't really, it doesn't, doesn't meet our taste, doesn't meet our palate. We don't recommend that you buy it. But keep in mind, everybody's tastes are different. But we try to go out and uh, well, actually Colby's been going out more than I have lately and buying these bourbons and we've been been doing these taste tests for you. So we try to save you a little bit of money. Yeah, it's got, it's got to be pretty bad to get a one from us. One one is pretty bad. I mean, we like bourbon. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, we try to you find can, the best. Yeah, you can find something the best in all of them. value in most all of them. But you know, we've, we've come across a few. That, we have. Uh, we have. But one for us is a brown bag. Yep. And so that, that is definitely one we do not recommend that you buy. Do us a favor, save your money, buy something else that we recommend. Two is it's getting better. Two for us is still probably what we would consider maybe like a stock bourbon. That is something that we call a mixer. That's something you would use in an old fashioned or a Manhattan or whatever it is you want to mix it, Coke, what have you. Number three, it's getting a lot better. It might be a little higher in proof. Um, we typically fall in like the 90 to a 100 proof category for our taste, but you might like a little higher one, dilute it down with a little rock. We call that on the rocks. And last but not least, the way I prefer to drink mine, the way Colby does, and the way most, I guess, experienced bourbon drinkers do, and that would be neat. And uh, we like ours in the Glen Cairn. I highly recommend the Glen Cairns if you really want to get into this whole sampling thing. And, and if you like a big drink. <laughs> hey, that's, that's a Glen Cairn on steroids right there. <laughs> get a get a jumbo Glen Cairn. I, this is what you get in your stockings at Colby's house. <laughs> well, that's, it's funny because I was out shopping for my wife for Christmas and uh, came across that and I was like, oh, I need that. <laughs> so I bought it for myself. Yeah, I actually bought myself a a whiskey glass that's not quite as big as that one, but <laughs> definitely holds a little bit more. So, so yeah, I, I just went back and looked because I was curious, and we've rated five bourbons a one. Wow, that's that's a lot more than I, I thought it would have been like three. Well, it was uh, the goat, which was super goat. smoky. Smoky, I mean, yeah. It's... It, it tasted like you were eating a charcoal briquette. Yeah, it really, it almost tasted like you were standing in the fire. And then two honeys we didn't like. We yeah. didn't like the Jim Beam honey, and we didn't like the short barrel. Uh, yeah, and we also we and sort of course of, the short we, barrel we was allow, downgraded because, because of, the, of price. the price. Yeah, we, so we do we do allow economics to kind of determine our rating system a little bit because obviously if it's a if it's a sixty plus dollar yeah. bottle of bourbon, you're you're gonna want it to knock your socks right, off. Right. Yeah. So, so that beekeeper, to, yeah, we beekeeper, to, we were a little. Yeah, we did those the same episode. Remember, we had the whole honey That's themed right. episode, was... and the only one we liked was the uh, wild turkey honey. Uh, we mm -hmm. did we didn't like yeah, the Jim right. Beam or the 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 beekeeper. 
the, the Woodford Double Oaked. The Woodford Double Oaked. And yeah, that, that also, it was very oak, super, super oaky. Yeah. And real dry. And a little pricey, too. So we gave that a one. And then the last one we gave a one to was that Dread River. That uh, yeah, that was dreadful. I, the only reason I bought it was because it was <clears throat> it was distilled in yeah, it was distilled whatever, it yeah. was distilled in Birmingham, Alabama. So I was like, well, I got to give it a try. But yeah, those five <clears throat> don't buy. This this one I I don't, I don't anticipate us approaching the one. No, based no, on I, experience. Yeah, and no, what I, I've heard. I've Bibb had some Bibb and Tucker. It's been a little while, um, and and I did like it. So I I, I don't anticipate this. Being a one, um, so yeah. Well, with that said, with that said uh, like I said, the let's um, take our time to the Glen Cairn. Yes, af- obviously it's it's a six year bourbon, uh, as I mentioned, it being aged six years. Now the mash is a corn, rye, and barley. They didn't right. get they didn't they didn't disclose the percent of each one, but uh, but it is it is not a wheat, it is a rye. Okay. And then um, that suits me a little more than you. Yeah, it, it, it's going to run you about fifty-one bucks. Okay. Uh, well, that's MSRP. You might, depending on what state you live in. Yeah, it's it, a little hard it, to get a hold of in the, in the Carolinas. I would, I would, yeah, and I would say probably anywhere from fifty-one to about sixty-five is is honest, fair fair market price for it. I honestly don't really. I don't feel like I've seen that on many allocated lists either nah. here in the Carolinas. Yeah, so. well, the Carolinas, they. Yeah, this state sucks. Our, our, we have we have the worst selection. We do. Of, of I mean, it's it, you know I went to Georgia over Christmas, come back with a bottle of Colonel Taylor, a bottle of Buffalo Trace, a bottle of Blanton's, a bottle of Willet. I mean, yeah, you pay a little bit more because that that the prices aren't reg- regulated like North Carolina is, but you can get whatever you want. You know, right. you, you don't have to just go in the store and. They hope us, they've got something. Let us decide what we want to spend on. Right. We'll, we'll exactly. Make the price for sure. Exactly. Uh, this is ninety-two proof. Okay. So it's got good color. Nice to amber it color. Sure, like yeah. I said, it's six years in a toasted barrel. So you know, and and I, I really enjoyed learning that they they filter it through the 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 sugar. Uh, it definitely has a sweet nose. ahead of time. Sweet well, nose. the nose is supposed to be vanilla and sweet mm-hmm. hay. Right. And sweet what? Sweet hay. <laughs> sweet hay. Hey. What the hell is sweet hay, man? I don't, hey, I don't write the reviews. I just read them. Come on now. <laughs> how, how do you how do you work with that? Sweet hay. I'm like, what did you say? Sweet hay. <laughs> okay. I mean, I guess okay. I guess I guess they asked the the horses, you know, which was <laughs> sweet hay. I don't I don't understand that one, but it's got a really good nose. Too. Well, and, and the nice taste and is supposed to be like a pecan pie. And then a chestnut finish. It's supposed to have a long chestnut finish. Hmm. I definitely get a nice, a nice sweet upfront flavor. Nutty, nutty pecan-y. Yeah. for sure, pecan-y. Yeah, nutty. Um, you know, because they 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 name pecans and they name chestnuts, so. Well, I've never had a chestnut. Never thought of eating I, a chestnut. I, I've smelled a lot of them. Have you roasted <clears> them on the open no, fire? No, but before? I but I've smelled them on the streets of New York. Okay. You know the little street corner vendors usually have the the, the roasted chestnuts around okay. Christmas time. They All got right. the big pretzels and the chestnuts, and then they. So yes, it, it is a. It's a thing. It, yeah. Okay. It's very, it's very pleasant. Good. It's a good, it's a good bourbon. Yeah. Um, not a lot of complexity in me. I feel like I get sweet vanilla, a little, a little hug to my, to my tongue on the upfront. Right. And then it finishes really smooth. Mm-hmm. It finishes in what I would expect, you know, a, a low nineties proof to finish. Um, you know, I'm gonna go. Gosh, for 51 bucks to me, that's kind of in my wheelhouse. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go three on that. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go. I'm, I'm gonna go three too. I thought you might drop down to a two there for a second. Well, I was I was thinking a two, but you know, I like something with maybe a little bit more. I mean, I get complexity I get, I, to to a, to and, a and they actually of, and they actually promote themselves as being a very complex bourbon. 
Did you get complexity out of that one? I mean, I not as flavors. Not as much as like the the horse soldier that yeah. we did last week. Yeah, no, I didn't get a lot of flavors out of this one. But but what I did get was I got a very uh, sweet taste, um, sweet nose. Yeah, I, I, I get the pecan pie. I do. I, get I, it. I can see the pecan. I don't know about the sweet hay thing. I mean. Nah. I mean I don't get well, it, it was even, I, I, I truncated the description because it was even talking about like sandalwood and mace. And I was like, mm. don't know what those are, what they're supposed to smell like. I so. have chewed on a straw before, you know, like, <laughs> you know, like, you you know, know, like out on the farm, you, you know. Maybe that's what they're talking about. about. I guess, but I don't, I guess, I, I don't know. I don't get the sweet hay thing, but honestly, it's a very smooth bourbon. I didn't get a lot of complexity to it. Wasn't a lot of burn, which I would expect, I guess, at 92 proof. But it was a smooth bourbon. You know where I would put this bourbon? I would put this bourbon at a, I would buy this bourbon if you're just starting out collecting or drinking and you want something maybe with a, I don't know, just, you know, a, a little higher in price with a smoother flavor. Cause I really, you know, I would steer most new, newcomers away from a higher proof bourbon. Right. Into something like this, that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. It's like, I mean, Bib and Tucker is not in <laughs> Carolina. It's be something different. Well, let, let me let me tell you a funny story about Bib and Tucker. Do that. Okay, so it's a beautiful bottle. It is a pretty bottle. You know, with the with the raised lettering on there, almost like an old school like prohibition. Yeah, type like an old uh, yeah bottle jug you drink out of and, and it, you know that's part of what they kind of said that they built their whole program on uh, was you know the old times and, but anyway so bib and tucker and you can see it's it's like it, are they related to sazerac it's in some like way? Mm -mm. it's like all raised lettering mm -hmm. and uh so i'm sitting at work one day my boss is in my office. We're just shooting the shit. Drinking your bib and tuck. No, no, we weren't drinking. We don't drink on the job. Excuse me. And uh, so my wife calls. And she says, I'm at the ABC store. You want me to get you anything? And I was like, well, do they have anything I don't have? And the, one, the, the ABC store up in Denver, close by to us, has got this uh, one shelf kind of in the center, or it's a tiered shelving up near the register right in the center and a lot of times they'll put newer or rare or stuff that typically is not on the shelf so she's going around and she's telling me what all they have on there and and then she gets to the to the bib and tucker and she picks it up and she says well i got bib and fucker because <laughs> the t yeah has got the, does look like got that F. little 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 tip right there, and it almost makes it look like an F. So I'm like I said, I'm sitting there, I'm talking to my boss, and she said, "Well, they got the bib and fucker," and I just bust out laughing. <laughs> and I look, I turn to my boss, and, I look, and he's a bourbon drinker too. And a lot of times we 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 are talking about, you know, I'm giving him recommendations on on what to try, and I just I bust out laughing. I turn and look at him, and I said. She said bib and fucker. <laughs> so we got a good laugh out of it. It does look like an F. <laughs> so now everybody listen to the podcast. Go look at the bottle and, and see what you think. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I can see where you would Get you some you bib and fucker. That. It's good, man. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. So, yeah. I, li I like it. Yeah, you, no. You I recommend it. I recommend oh, yeah, it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, a, it's a strong three, a good price point. You know, mm -hmm. if it was $75, $80, I probably would have. You know, say yeah, yeah, some better yeah. ones to get, but yeah, it's starting to crawl but, up in prices. We're getting these more yeah. and more of these little. Well, it's funny because you know originally we were like, okay, anything up. below thirty dollars, we're gonna say that's uh, you know right one dollar sign. Between thirty and fifty, that's two dollar signs. Anything over fifty is three dollar signs. Well, it seems like everything we're doing is three dollar signs. Yeah, it's it's a little out of hand for sure. So yeah, it's uh, of course we we wanna taste the good stuff you know and, and recommend the good stuff and like guess, like like you said let us spend the money and let let our audience know don't go waste your money or hey right. you, you might like it go try it yeah but we probably do also need to do some of the lower uh, priced ones also yeah because we've got listeners that 
you know, they don't want to drop over fifty dollars right. on a bottle. No, so. for sure. I mean, you got a table. I'm looking at a table over there that's probably <laughs> three hundred dollars worth of bourbon. Mm, four bottles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> three yeah. or four bottles. Yeah. Yeah. So we got some. We got some good ones. Got some good ones that are going to come on the show. Mm -hmm. So yeah, appreciate appreciate it. it was good. Yeah, we yeah it was, and we've got. You know, we can do a whole uh, celebrity line of, of bourbons. You know, we uh, one of our listeners gave us a bottle of uh, the Duke. The Duke. So some John Wayne. Uh, Elvis. I got a bottle of Elvis that I had to buy to get my Colonel Taylor. <laughs> oh, you're giving away what's on the table. Uh, well, you know, just a little teaser. A little teaser. Uh, so... So yeah, we we can do a celebrity show. You got some Charles Woodson that <coughs> would be another brown bagger. C Dub, I don't know about brown bag now. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give him at least a two based on that name. As a as a Michigan homer, there, it's a definite brown bagger. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little disappointed in that one, C Dub. You got you got to do better. Well, you know, it's like when when the bourbon industry and that whole craze picked up, everybody wanted to jump on. You know. Sure. Florida Georgia line with their, their, right. their what is it, Old Camp? Uh, yeah, Old Camp is one. I mean, I don't know if that's Florida Georgia line or is that Kid there's, Rock. There's Redneck Riviera. There's yeah, you got Matthew McConaughey. Yeah, McConaughey's got one now. I mean, it's they all wanted and it, and it, they wanted to get to it so quick that it, most of it's like two year old stuff. And yeah, it's just not it's just not very good. I mean, yeah, if if I'm gonna put my name on something. I'm gonna do it right. Stick it's to gonna the good be good. Stuff. I ain't just trying to to jump on a trend and you know make a little money. So. Yeah, I saw I saw a video uh, the other night where Elmer T. Lee, the Elmer T. Lee, was talking, mm -hmm. and you know how he drinks his bourbon uh -uh. with Sprite. Really? Yeah. Hmm. He was and he was drinking the good stuff <laughs> with Sprite. With Sprite. Ugh. Can you believe that, Elmer? But that Elmer T. Lee said. Right. Dilute it down, make it a mixer, but he was drinking the good stuff. Yeah. Mm. Makes you I, think. Makes you think. You I, know. I can't. I, I think the whole the whole key to this whole bourbon thing is do what you do. Hey, yeah, absolutely. I mean, hey, the man is a legend in the industry. If he says he wants to drink with Sprite, who <laughs> who the hell's gonna tell who him gonna no? Gonna tell him no. Right. So, exactly. I mean, I, me personally, my good stuff, like you said earlier. We like that neat. We like yeah. to enjoy the bourbon standalone as it is. Uh, That's right. But you know, yeah. I mean, I don't want to. Occasionally, I'll drink an old fashioned. I'll occasionally, pound the Colonel Taylor and you know, drink a whole bunch of Colonel well, Taylor I mean, if, with, see, with my, a mixer. And, my, my my thinking to that is, if I'm gonna dilute it down or kill it down with some Sprite or some Coke Zero or something like that, why waste a good bourbon? An expensive bourbon when you can... Yeah, an expensive bourbon. Yeah, you can throw some Maker's Mark in it. Because that's a good bourbon. I mean, I don't I mean, even like... I don't, you know, Buffalo Trace is a $30 bottle of bourbon, but it's so hard to get, and it is so good, I don't even want to mix it with anything. I yeah. want to drink it neat. Right. So, it's not just about the price. It's, you know, it's about the availability. It's about the taste. And it's about how it meets your palate. Exactly. You know, honestly, because cause the C-Dub wasn't that bad. But it it was terrible. But it wasn't <laughs> it wasn't like really terrible. But like total, I totally agree. Like like this chicken cock. Out of even out of all the all the stuff that we've tasted, this still stands among the best. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not cheap though. It's a sixty dollar yeah, bottle. It's, it's sixty. But, but still, did, you know, when you think of bourbon, if you were to put this on the table with Colonel Taylor, with Blanton's, with you know, with some of the high dollar stuff, you would you would overlook this. Right. Most people would overlook that. Right. Yeah, it's it's not always just about the price or but uh finding that good that good bourbon. That's that, it, man. That meets it's, your palate. Keep drinking. That's right. We love the liquor. <laughs> Another funny story for another time. <laughs> we love the liquor. It's good, man. That was good, man. I, I like that. that was, yeah, yeah, no, that's a good one. That's a good one to have in your collection. You know, it's not something you're going to want to drink every day, but, yep. you know, it, it's, a, it's a good one to have in your collection and share with your guests. And Like I said, the bottle's beautiful, and uh, go ahead and get a bottle. Yep, yep. 
Follow, right. like, and share our content. That's Those right. of you watching, you can see it behind us. If you're not watching, you know, we have all the socials. TikTok, we're on Instagram. We got a YouTube channel, and of course, we got a, an email. Those of you are starting, we're starting to get some emails coming in. That's right. Bourbon Buzz and Ball and PR at gmail.com. Follow, like, and share our content. I promise you, we notice, and we're looking at deciding what our next giveaway is going to be. So, for those of you that are getting in there and starting to follow, like, and share our content, you're going to be putting that drawing, and we're going to start rewarding some loyalty with some nice rewards. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, nice. Another episode in the books. In the books. And uh, rate that shit. Yeah, we'll be back next week with with another bourbon and some more sports talk. So until then, cheers. cheers. Happy New Year.